Cindy Ambler here. I want to talk to you about a quilt facing method that I developed that uses a continuous strip rather than the traditional four individual ones. So why would you want to do that? Well, art quilters often want to use a stiff batting material such as felt, Peltex, Decobond, Craftweight Pellin, those sorts of materials you can see here a deco bond and a craft weight pellon. They're thick, they're stable. This makes a more stable foundation for something that's going to be hanging on the wall. But that creates a lot of bulk. As you can see in this example, I have a front, I have the deco bond, I have a back, and when I put facing material on and I turn it to the back, I have a very, very thick, heavy edge that's going to be a little more difficult to work with. So here are some pieces that I used this method on. And you can see we have that nice, thin edge where the front wraps across to the back. We have a nice, mitered, pointed corner the width that you're going to use is up to you. For example, this one's a pretty large width. Again, nice corner. And finally, here's one where I made the facing material the same as the backing. I also did not quilt through the backing, put the backing on just before the facing. That's an option, although I don't know what judges will say. So how is this accomplished? Well, it takes some planning. You want to make sure that when you cut your materials for your front, that it's going to be at least a quarter inch and preferably more larger on each dimension than what your finished product is going to be because this is what is going to, you're going to sew your facing to. Now, I am not a good cutter, so I like to make these areas larger than that quarter inch and then trim down when needed. You're going to do the normal sandwiching and you're going to do the normal quilting. Now, cut your strip a facing and piece it as needed to make it as long as you need to go all the way around and of course enough to butt or miter the ends when you're done. The most important thing you're going to do is put on your zipper foot. You need this because you need to have a little distance between the edge of this nice firm batting material to give you that space to overlap. On my machine, if I put the needle all the way to the left, I still have about a sixteenth of an inch that's going to be between this edge and the needle, and that's your overlap space. So that's exactly what you want. If your needle goes all the way to the left, bring it back a notch. Okay, with right sides together and the front of your quilt facing down, sew down till you get to your first corner and sew one stitch beyond. That's equivalent to the distance between your foundation and your sewing line. And when you get to that corner, pivot and then back off. This allows you to get to the area here on the facing. You want to clip that. You want to clip it not too far down or you'll end up with a hole on the outside of your quilt, but down far enough so that the next step is you flip what you've already sewn up and out of the way and then you pivot using that cut to bring your facing down and then 
you sew down to the next, just the same way. And here you go. You do that for all four corners. You see what's happening here? Yeah. Once you've sewn down all four corners, it's going to look like a little box. You flip that box up and iron down this edge that in that direction and then when you bring it over here iron it again to make sure that that turnover of the front is fairly even all the way down. Now personally I put a line on my quilts it's going to be covered when I sew down the facing but this makes sure that I get a nice even straight line but you can do it the way you want. And when you get to your corner, it's easy enough to miter that corner. And then off you go. And that is how you get a continuous strip facing.